Uh, so, uh, for me, it's really nice to talk to you. Uh, I will do a presentation, but for me, the most important thing is that we have a kind of an interactive meeting. Uh, I will talk about my work, but please raise your hand when you have a question in the moment. So do not wait. Uh, the, the purpose of this meeting is to, I hope, to learn, to learn you something, because I've made a lot of mistakes and I want to, uh, to uh, well, maybe to, to tell you, don't, don't, you, you have to make mistakes to learn, of course, but maybe some mistakes are kind of, oh my God, I, I, I wish I, I didn't have to, uh, I wish I didn't had gone that way before. So uh, please uh, listen to my story. Uh, Hola Mexico was my, uh, was my first uh, line to, to you. Uh, I don't speak a word, a word of Spanish, so uh, my English is a little bit better, but <laughs> even could be better. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, I've been an illustrator for 25 years. Uh, only illustrating other, other ones' uh, children's books. And seven years ago, I started creating my own picture books. Why? Well, because of I was a kind of frustrated. Because uh, always working for other artists, all, only illustrating and, and working like an illustration factory because of the money, you know, because uh, there isn't uh, a lot of uh, money in the business. But uh, I was kind of fed up and I was kind of tired of only working for other ones. And there was, uh, again, that beautiful ch illustrated uh, children's book. And the author got a lot of good critics. And the illustrator was like minimum. So he has also made some beautiful illustrations. You know, every time again and again. And I thought, wow. Uh, I went to uh, Art Academy. And I had a vision of being an artist, you know, and not only the second man behind a book. So uh, it's, it's, it's not bad, of course, to, to work together with an author, because when you, when you don't feel you have, you have the urge to write, oh my God, it's really good to only illustrate, because that's difficult enough, as you know. But I felt after 18 years, there was a little bit more in me because when I was at high school, I also wrote some stuff and I wrote uh, things in uh, little stories. But when I went to Art Academy, all that disappeared and I only became a visual artist, so not in text. Uh, let me think. Um, I've done a lot of illustrated uh, children's books up to 500, that's really crazy, but into 25 years, uh, that's a lot. But it, as I told you, uh, I had a technique that was really fast. I did do uh, digital drawings, so I could speed up, you know, digital coloring, uh, 500 books. And uh, so like seven years, I started my, writing my own picture books. Now I have 10 of them. Uh, they're not all over here, but uh, a lot of them are. Uh, and of course, I'm very proud of these three ones, uh, translated into Spanish by uh, the publisher of uh, Fondo. Uh, and they're doing really good, right, over here. So I'm really proud uh, of that. Let me think. These are also the illustrated, uh, illustrated children's books. So I'm not only creating picture books on my own, but also like two or three illustrated ch uh, children's books per year. So there is uh, one picture book per year. And I work on that like uh, six, seven, eight months. And in between there are like one, two, three uh, illustrated children's books together with other authors. Yeah, let's go, let's start the presentation. I thought maybe it's nice to give uh, a little bit of uh, behind the scenes of uh, some picture books uh, to tell you some uh, secret stories uh, that uh, people don't know, but I will, uh, I will tell you right now. Let me see. Okay, so, uh, sempre cerca. Is that okay? Is the pronunciation? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I went to Nepal uh, three times for, uh, I was, uh, I'm the ambassador of uh, from the Dutch foundation uh, who does uh, charity work promoting children's book to uh, Nepali children. 
and we collect some money to buy Nepali children's books and give them to poor schools in Nepal. So not, not only the children, but to poor schools. So they have the chance to read the beautiful stories of whatever is possible in life, you know, not only becoming a doctor or becoming a factory worker, but also uh, reading about becoming an artist, a musician, uh, a theater player, a musician, a dancer, like that. So, uh, went uh, uh, three times to Nepal, and uh, on the first day of that uh, first trip, I saw a public funeral. So, uh, a deceased person was burned, and it was uh, a lot of people were there, and there was a lot of grief. And uh, I, me, as a tourist, I saw it happening, and I was I was really impressed by it. So it was really into the open. Uh, I could see it, and it was uh, it touched my heart. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, when there is a funeral, all people are uh, are being sad because somebody died. It's always behind doors, you know. Everything is closed, and when you go out the door, uh, your face is quite normal again. And back home, you cry again, or but it's not in in the open. So that was really wow. It, it should be like that. That's number one. And there was also kind of a feeling of the circle of life. So the deceased person who was who was burned, the charcoal was thrown into the river, and I saw fish doing this like hop hop you know, eating the charcoal. And I thought, oh my God, that's the person, uh, the charcoal and the fish again, and he lives and already he, he will. So it's the circle of life. I want to tell a story about life and death and maybe, maybe that circle of life. So when you read the story, it's about hope. It's about uh, death isn't, isn't an end. I think it's my personal meaning, but everybody can, can feel it uh, by themselves. I wrote a story uh, when I flew to, let me think, it was a flight to, a long distance flight. I wrote a story in a flight of eight or nine, uh, eight or nine hours and it was, it was there, you know? It came up to me and it was ready to, ready to go. But I needed some, uh, I needed some uh, uh, pictures to go with it. And I thought, well, I'm just going to scroll into my iPhone, my own pictures. And again, so this is a picture together with another Dutch uh, illustrator. She joined my trip, uh, Linde Vaas. Uh, and she, all, she also works together uh, 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 with me uh, in the same publishing house in the Netherlands. It's called Lemniscaat. Uh, and we went uh, the two to show our books because because we also had Nepali translations. Uh, we were sitting there uh, in front of a temple, and I thought, "Oh my God, this is really beautiful." So okay, I made this drawing. So, as you know, it's this one. Yes. So I used a lot of pictures from Nepal. Uh, the I was telling to also to you uh, the story is 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 uh, placed into Nepal, but could could have been also in Mexico. You know, it's a, the the story I tell of Babu is something that could happen everywhere. But of course, Nepal and its beautiful jungle vibe and a mountain vibe and the schools are are looking really cool into the landscape. I used the Nepali uh, pictures, also like. This one, the temple in Janakpur. So I made, uh, it's, it's the first one. It's this one. I drew the temple, as you can see. And yeah, it's, it's this uh, picture. Why did I choose for black and white? Maybe somebody has an answer. Because um, in the Netherlands, I'm quite famous for my brilliant colors and a lot of coloring, and it's very expressive. So they were really astonished that I use only black and white. So, oh my God, what is, what is this? <laughs> who, maybe, who can answer my own question? It's maybe because of the topic, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't need lots of colors to talk about that. Huh? Indeed, indeed, indeed. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite black and white, so life is maybe white, death is maybe black, or otherwise, I don't know. 
uh, and, uh, and I thought I have to do this very pure and basic uh, story uh, with one pencil. So I used one pencil uh, when I wanted to, to, to make it more deep black. I pushed the pencil harder and I wanted to, 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 to keep it bright white. I didn't touch the paper, you know, it's only the white of the paper. Yeah, so also my hand is black and white. <laughs> what yeah. size are you looking at? Uh, one on one. So, uh, so the drawings are in the... No, um, no. because in the Netherlands there, there is another, there's another version. We call it the art version. It's bigger. Uh, so the drawings are indeed a little bit bigger than this one. A uh, little bit bigger, like, like from here to, to here. But I needed the space, you know. Uh, what, is, what is important, uh, what, what is always important also for you is don't uh, zoom in or zoom out too much. People who are reading or seeing your drawings have a connection in their minds and they know, okay, a pencil is, the, the, so the, the point of the pen, pencil is this thick. When you go, when you blow it up or you, you it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't connect. So uh, when, you, when you work uh, with a digital device, and it, of course it's easy, uh, don't, don't blow it up too much. Like only like 10% blowing up or, or uh, minimize, uh, min minimize it, you know? Because otherwise people think it's strange. It, it doesn't connect to you. People are smart, you know? Even, even, even children uh, feel it, uh, it doesn't connect. Uh, let me think. Yeah, so one and one, and yeah, it was it it it's you know uh, who does the same thing as I did uh, drawing with a pencil? Is there somebody who works only with a pencil? No, okay. Okay, yeah. So it's it's kind it's kind of uh, kind of let me how to say it kind of easy because you work in layers like in a photoshop layer you 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 draw like this eh? so only the only over here the the very light version and then there's a second layer you go you go deeper and there's a third layer you go black more black so every time there is a layer and a layer in it and it it deepens you know it gets darker. yes yeah that's what i mean but you have to work in layers, you know. The first layer is, for the total drawing, is very light. Uh, so don't start over here, just, just uh, a lot of black, because the balance can be not okay, you know. I see a lot, sometimes I see an illustrator or an artist uh, start his drawing over here, and it's totally in detail, and it's totally finished, and over here, nothing has happened. And that's not okay, because then you cannot, uh, participate in what is happening. Maybe, maybe it shouldn't be that black, that dark, you know? So always uh, think of what you are doing and, and don't, don't work it out too much. Yeah, so this drawing, this drawing uh, is, a, is, a, is a, a combination of more than three pictures, of course, so uh, you know, the bear over here is a picture, and the pots and the pans are, is a picture. How much time did you get to make that one? Uh, I always have, I always have enough time, so my publisher don't tell me you have to. You, it, it's for six or seven or eight months or one year, so I just start working. And this one was quite like, I think se seven or eight months, but it's. That, that only one. Uh, no, the drawing? Uh -huh, no, the drawing. no, only the drawing is like uh, three, four days, three days, uh, full time, you know, like beginning at uh, uh, nine o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. yeah, maybe three days. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I like this one because in Nepal I saw rhino walking down the, street, the, the streets of the village. It was quite impressive uh, for this Dutch uh, boy, <laughs> because we only have uh, maybe a chicken in the street. <laughs> uh, and as you see, this is the picture, and it's just, uh, 
yeah, the, the division on the picture and then it's, it's kind of easy and only uh, processing it into, from color into black and white, you know. And I put in the, the rhino, also from a picture, of course. Uh, okay. So yes, as I told you, this is kind of the beginning of the drawing over there. And then you have, I had to uh, build it up. Processing, process. And what size do you make your sketches? The sketches? Uh, always one on one. Always one on one. Yeah. Uh, or it has to be like uh, for a dummy or like uh, a doodle, you know. But uh, when I start sketching, really serious for the picture book, it's always one on one. Yeah, and I have, uh, I have quite, uh, you know, uh, who works with uh, paint? So uh, who is an analog artist and who is a digital artist? So analog, okay, hmm, okay. So a lot of digital artists, right? Okay, so when you work uh, uh, on uh, paper, uh, there's always a difficulty uh, from, from sketch to, to final artwork to put it over. You know, the sketches can be really beautiful <laughs> and how how to put it onto the, the final artwork on the, on the real good paper, you know? But I have a kind of a, a technique. It's, uh, I don't know if you have it over here. Uh, in the Netherlands, it's, it's like a, a charcoal paper. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, you can see through it, you know? It's, it's kind of misty, kind of foggy paper. Yeah, so I have my sketch on a paper, and then I take that charcoal paper, and then I have, so I, I draw it, I draw it, uh, you know, it, uh, I see it, I draw it, and then I take this charcoal paper to the final paper of the artwork, and then I, I push with, with a, a pencil like this, very small point, I, I push it like this, and then I take the charcoal paper away, and in my final paper, you see kind of a, 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 a yeah, a line. Yeah, and then I have, I put my, I put my lamp, so, it's 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 a light, you know. Uh, while shining, you see the lines in the in the in the paper. Okay. So last year in oh, no, this year in June, uh, I went to Nepal again, and there is a Nepali translation of the book. So I was very happy to show the book, and it was quite impressive to turn back to the to the places I I, I uh, had drawn in my uh, in my book. Yeah. Okay, next book. So this is my cat, my cat Lou, my fat cat Lou. Uh, he has two, uh, two passion, uh, he's, he's passionate about uh, two things, uh, eating and sleeping. <laughs> and everywhere in my house, he is sleeping, you know? And this picture is exactly the, the, what happened when I got the idea for Alto Monstros, Alto Monstros. You know, it was, uh, this is my hallway, picture of my hallway. And it was laying over there, and this is a very narrow, narrow point in my hallway. This is a wall, and over here, there is my, uh, my, my stairway. And he was blocking the way. And I was thinking in my head, uh, now he is asking me for a coin, you know? Please give me a coin, a coin, and then I will let you pass. <laughs> And that was the idea for Stop Monsters, you know? This, these monsters want something, give it to me, and then you can go. That's a nice idea, I thought. And maybe there has to be a, a part of tension. So there are two little girls who have a, a, a cargo bike piled up with a, a lot of irony and old stuff. And I thought, okay, we have this big pile and every time they have to give something and what would be really cool is that that pile is disappearing and children are processing, oh my God, every time it's less and less and less. I hope that don't, there isn't a monster at the end. And yes, you know the story? So the monster is pointing, give me that and there's only the little sister in the cargo bike. And what happens then, it's really, it's really funny, I think. So 
what happened over there was was uh, was the kind of inspiration I got. Um, uh, people ask me a lot of times, where do you get your inspiration from? It just happens. I don't know. It's so difficult, you know. There are periods of time, like like almost one year, that I, that I don't get an idea at all, nothing at all, nothing that is good enough. So I'm also kind of, uh, you know, uh, oh my God, do I have to stop creating picture books because I don't have an idea? But when you've done it just once, you know, it can be again and again. But just be patient and just uh, trust the, I don't know, trust the process, trust the universe. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not like, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, something really special. Uh, I'm like everybody, be, but just maybe I have a, a kind of trust that it will be okay someday. You know, and I know what is what is also not good. That is when you're always working and there's a lot of stress. Your mind is shut off, you know, from over here. The, so the ideas come in in from above. <laughs> and when you're stressful and when you're working too hard, it's it's it uh, it closes. Uh, uh, um, a question: How do you know? Like we all got like all this bunch of ideas, but uh, how do you know when one of your ideas is worth it? Like you. you like work to be make into a picture, but like you talk to your publisher or how, how do you know like which one yeah. of your ideas might be? Uh, it's my intuition. It's my intuition. You know, I've got, I've got more ideas, of course, but they are not good. They are not special. You know, a, a good picture book, you know the formula of a good picture book? So uh, in the beginning, uh, there, are two, there, are, there are characters, and the characters have a problem, always a problem. You know, you can, you can pick every picture book. In the beginning, there is a problem. You know, these kids have a problem. In La Isla, there is a problem. Over here, there is a problem. The problem over here, over here is uh, sadness, is uh, his grandmother dies. The problem over here is the monsters who block the road. That's a problem. The problem over here is, uh, they get uh, shipwrecked. Every time there is a problem in these books. So, and then it's up to you how to solve this problem. And at the beginning, there is an unexpected final solution. That's, that's all, that's all that you have to do. That's, that is, and the best picture books are so, so simple, but those are the hardest one to find, you know? So uh, I, I, I tell other students, so I'm, uh, I've been a coach to other students, I tell you, uh, when, when you want to tell your neighbor about your new picture book concept, it has to be, you have to tell it, you have to tell him or her, uh, it doesn't need more than like three or four sentences. It has to be very, your idea, when you express, you want, when you have to tell your idea to your neighbor, as an example, it has to be very short. Otherwise, it's too complicated. It doesn't work for children. So that's 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 what is very important to uh, to uh, to get a hold on. Yeah. So as I told you, this is the inspiration for Stop Monsters. Two girls and the big pile of irony. And the monster says, stop, and every time. And of course, along the way, along the way, the process, there are some new ideas that I can add to the bigger idea. So there are also some kind of little stories in it. Uh, no, th this is even a bigger story. Um, so the monster points at something that is really old, so the, the wood stove. And I thought, oh yeah, it would be really cool when the monster uh, uh, thinks in a different way as the humans do. So this is an old wood stove. They, they, gave it, they give it to him and he uses it as a saxophone or a pipe or something. And every time that is so funny for the children. So I thought, okay, there's a wood stove and maybe the, the bicycle. And who has read the story? Who has read the story already? Yeah. Is there someone who 
doesn't have read it already? Yeah, you don't have? Okay, so there is the bicycle. And there's a mon yeah, no. So over here is the bicycle of the little girl. And a monster will take that bicycle. For what reason? To use it as? To bicycle? Okay, okay, yeah. There's another suggestion. No? Scratching? Yeah, okay, okay. Well, I thought. So he wants the bicycle, you know. And he uses it as, uh, as glasses. Okay, and every time there is a funny solution that I thought of. So this is the last monster, and there is no pile, but just the little girl in the cargo bike. Uh, and you have to read the story what happens next. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I'll show, yeah, maybe I'll show you. Oh yeah, so this is the sketch, this is the sketch. You see, you see what happens to the, this is a kind of a digital sketch and some, uh, so this is, let me go back. This is, uh, go back, go back. No, mm, no, no, it's this drawing, you know, and I thought the sketch is too edgy, too, he's, he's like skinny and it maybe becomes too scary and for children it's always important, okay, you can become scary but not too scary, the children have to go to bed, you know, have to sleep, so I have some examples of monsters that did not reach the book, did not come into the final uh, drawing. Okay, yeah. Over here you see some tryouts that were too, you know, kind of scary, right? So I'm not perfect, you know? I was working all day long on a monster and then my wife came in at the end of, my, at the, end of the day. <laughs> Oh no, Mark, they're too scary. And I went, oh, sh why didn't I see it before? So, you know, over here, it's really scary. This one is, this one, no, she, my wife didn't like it, so. <laughs> it's gone. But you see, it's, uh, it's uh, again, it's, uh, sometimes it's a struggle for everybody, I know. It's a struggle and then you have to be honest to yourself. Is it, uh, some people tell you something, your publisher or your neighbor or your relationship, I don't know. And yeah, that's a good uh, advice sometimes. So uh, you're always on your own, but that doesn't mean you're absolutely knowing everything, you know? Sketches. So this is a sketch of the final drawing, the girls over there. And I will tell you soon how I create these pictures because maybe as you can see as an expert they are not made out of one piece. There are no unique piece of art. Next one. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, this is the last drawing and over there you see the sketch. Uh, so I opened his eyes in the sketch is uh, he's, I thought, well, maybe peop people think uh, the monster is sleeping. And over here he is, he is more happy, active, open. Uh, so this is kind of a clue what happens to the cargo bike. <laughs> and the girls are sitting over here and drinking soda. Okay, next one. Something else, because uh, I got the question from a publisher, uh, Mark, we have an author and she's specialized in uh, nonfiction, so scientific, uh, scientific uh, writing. Yeah, about, uh, it's this book. I feel, I feel what you don't see. It's about emotions and animals. So do animals feel emotions? Yes, of course, of course. But again, uh, a chimpanzee uh, feels much more than 
than an insect, you know, or a goldfish. So everything is described and, and is what we see uh, at uh, gorilla is, is when a gorilla is laughing, does it mean he is laughing to us or does it mean I'm going to hit you? Something like, you know, it's all described in the book. And I thought, okay, I'm going to create like uh, portraits of animals only with the white uh, background. So it, 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 it becomes like a portrait. Uh, and the emotion, of course, into the, his, the, in the face of the animal is very important. Uh, this is a street dog. So the, the stories are all written on uh, things that have happened uh, in reality. And this is a street dog. He's traumatized and he's very, very scary. Uh, and you see it in his eyes. The pupils are very big and his ears are down. And well, I had to be yeah, very precisely in, in these uh, like almost photograph uh, illustrations, you know. But there's always something in it that is just like something that is not like a picture, you know. And that's my, my way of creating these photographic illustrations. You know what I mean? So it had to be like a picture, but there is something in it, and I cannot, cannot express what it is, but that is my person in it as an artist. Okay, so maybe you see it over here with the lion. You see, it's almost like a picture, but even not. Jane Goodall, Jane Goodall. Uh, okay, and these are the, the tryouts, the color tryouts, and I, we, sh we, we did show them in the book. Every time we did show them in the book because we thought it's quite, it's quite, uh, you know, uh, original. We showed it. Maybe over here. Oh, this one is maybe nice. Oh. <laughs> Let me show some other. So the lion, maybe th these colors are more bright, more better, of course, than the on the screen. Uh, yeah. What a kind of emotion does the chimpanzee have over there? Who can tell me? It's an emotion that is more deep down. Yeah, it's difficult, you know. <laughs> yeah, feeling jealous feeling jealous because uh, her mother, uh, the, this, this one is a, is a chimpanzee in the Netherlands in the zoo and her mother is quite old and has a very special bond together with a, a male a human, uh, uh, how do you feel, uh, how do you say it, uh, protector. protector, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has a very special bond and she's jealous and she throws stones at the human. <laughs> And she's sitting over there, like uh, mocking. Yeah, so the octopus, and he's really happy because he's taking a shower. <laughs> yeah, some other, some other, it's, it's this book. You know, the colors are a little bit too bright on the screen. An uh, illustrated children's book, jungle book, well known, of course, huh? yeah. So it's Mowgli and Shere Khan. And again, I gave a different version of a tiger, a Mark Jans uh, kind of tiger. So every time I go to, uh, I've learned some lessons in, 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 uh, in, in life, illustrating life. Uh, my publisher wants to see a Mark Jans tiger or a Mark Jans elephant. So what is very important is when you draw animals, it has to be your animal, it has to be your elephant or tiger, your personal, yeah, there has to be a kind of a switch in it. So I did this, yeah, that's a good example. I did this dino book. Mark, what's your approaches to create a good character? How? <laughs> <laughs> feeling, it's about feeling and it's about, I don't know, uh, also good advice is don't look too much to other illustrators, don't look too much to other artists because it, it weakens your own style, it weakens your own vision, 
I know, I know some uh, illustrators that started that were really depressive because they went to big book fairs and everywhere the, the most incredible good illustrators and they got home and they were like depressive, you know? And what is, what is important to lose all those, uh, all those other things around you and become even more of yourself. So you have to, you have to close it. I don't look, I don't, I don't see a lot of new uh, artwork or illustrators or because it weakens my, my, uh, my trust in myself. You know, even I have these kind of feelings when I go to Guadalajara, when I go to uh, Bologna and Europe and Italy, the, ver the biggest book fair of the uh, children's book fair. I see all those brilliant illustrators and they have things that I can't do that's not in me. They are brilliant in like uh, real natural drawings or even more um, uh, like, uh, how do you say, they, they draw like a baby, but beautiful, you know, very expressive. And, but that's not me, but when I see it, I, I can't do that because it's not me. So keep in balance with all those information that you soak up, it can, weaken yourself it's really yeah and have a have kind of trust in yourself because uh, the publisher is looking for that unique drawing you know not a second mark jansen not a second oliver jeffers or the famous illustrators not the second one no you who gives who has uh, his or her own vision on how to draw so important Yeah, so an inside uh, illustration and the, yeah, the cover. Oh, I know I was telling, uh, and then you came up with the question. Uh, I, made, uh, I made some drawings for, uh, for this uh, dino book. Uh, uh, and the first illustrations were like real photographic dinos. Of course, we, we don't have pictures, you know, of dinosaurs. Is that news to... Uh, to <laughs> We don't have pictures, but they were like, okay, there was nothing of imagination in it. And I went to my publisher and okay, he said, oh Mark, they're beautiful, but they're kind of worthless because I, I want to see the Mark Jansen dinos. Oh my God. So I went home kind of depressive. What next? I don't know how to do it. But again, into sketching and there are more uh, crazy, they became more crazy. You know these drawings? So over here you have the little children. Yeah. So you see, in one drawing you see what the story is about. Every time, every time there is a, a rehearsal of me showing uh, dinosaurs that the children don't see again and again. Wait. And I tell the children, oh, what beautiful trees there are. No, they're not trees. Yeah. And, and uh, the boy is denying uh, is talking to, to his brother and is denying the existence of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, no, no, dinosaurs don't exist. And they're standing on the head of a, and he says, dinosaurs don't exist. And then, oh my God, <laughs> all the dinos wake up. Rah. Okay, and then there is the final. The final is again kind of downplaying the story. So the children went back home very afraid of dinos. They never go into the forest again. They never go on a dino hunt again. They play with dinos, yeah, but these little ones, plastic ones, but are three words they don't uh, say anymore. 
Do you know which words? And the children, dinosaurs, don't, no, no, don't tell it, because otherwise the dinosaurs will wake up. So, yeah, about uh, the imagination uh, version of uh, how to draw the, the, the dinos. Mark, are yes. they all digital illustrations? Uh, partly. So I start drawing in, uh, as you see, as you see, so this is uh, Dreamer. Hopefully this book will be published. Uh, <laughs> tell her. Uh, so as you see, uh, this is a drawing on uh, paper uh, in watercolor. Watercolor, maybe a little bit of uh, uh, pencil, colored pencil. Uh, and again, the boy is, uh, is painted on uh, paper. And I have a scanning device. I scan the, scan the drawings and I put them together in Photoshop. And again, in Photoshop, there are like 50 to 100 layers of all these kind of separates, you know, the tiger over here. So he, here you see the, the charcoal paper, and I thought maybe I draw a tiger in blue. And let's see what happens. Uh, I did, uh, did a scan and I put him over here, and in Photoshop I had some possibilities, and let's try this one, let's try that uh, version of, you know, and there was one version that lighted up like in white. So a negative, I put him in negative, I think. Negative uh, dia, 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 dia positive, you know? Yeah. From black to white. Okay, so. Mm. Like when you get this, it's all about the play, like how you play with the image once you yeah. it up, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, uh, oh, the colors are not really but you get the vibe a little bit. This is, uh, these are the colors. More natural. And over here you see some little things happening. Can you see it? Some little, it's about, uh, this boy is a dreamer and everywhere he sees little animals, things, and it becomes worse and worse and worse. They become bigger and bigger. Sees them in the water and then into the forest and together with his father and again his father changes and over here you see, and oh my god, what is this? Maybe this is a man or something like that. Yeah, you have to read the story. It's uh, more, more than what I tell you now. It's, it's a little bit deeper, deeper. So, yeah. Processing, yeah. It's this one. And of course, these are a lot of layers, you know? These are some, uh, are you with, to get, uh, with a brush? Like uh, some uh, things, yeah. Next one, yes. It's like a collage. Uh, like you did those animals yeah. separate? All separate, all separate, all separate. Yeah, all separate. And uh, the glue is, the glue is always the shadow on the on the ground, I glue them with shadow, you know, so that that it's not not all uh, not all flat pieces on on top of each other, but the shadow will glue them together. At what point did you decide the technique that you want to use in your different books? It's a process, you know, because as I told you in the, in the beginning, so like 16 years I had, I started only with uh, watercolor, uh, unique pieces. So every time I drew a big piece in watercolor, but there were some things that I could not do. They were so difficult, you know, when you have a, when you have a big drawing uh, with watercolor, you have to, you have to draw, uh, not not over not, you know you you don't put the, the paint on a, over a character but you ha it had to be like 
a lot of uh, things that were not possible. So I was again a little bit frustrated. I want to do, I want to create pictures like this, but it, it's so so it's not possible only in, in watercolor. So uh, slowly I started uh, uh, to get an adjustment in uh, digit in the digital way. I thought I'd just put them on top of it, so not the paint huh, like in, in a one piece, but in layers on top of it. Yeah, so these flames are created out of maybe three or four flames, you know? I'm not that good to do it in, in, in just in, 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 one, <laughs> in <a> one take. <laughs> I'm sorry, people. It's kind of a, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Okay, so this is the book that, uh, this is a drawing that I drew like only four weeks ago. It's for uh, only a book cover, uh, together with another artist, about a singing unicorn. And it's kind of a, a really weird, weird story. So I thought, I have to, very, uh, I have to be brilliant colors, and, and he's singing, so his tongue is like, uh, like this, singing. There are two uh, dwarfs uh, and, and this singing pop star. She, she, she joins him. Yeah. And of course, maybe it's nice you see the birds over there. It's just, uh, I have a big, big archive of birds. Uh, let me see, the birds, the birds, the birds. Maybe she's just like this one, yeah. So I put, you know, the archive, I put them in some other drones. <laughs> Don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and some uh, only black and white drawings for the inside uh, illustrations. And they're really small, like uh, logos. But every time they're really like sketching, like fooling around, and then there is one good and the other is not okay, so I threw them out. This is the sketch, the sketch in, uh, in uh, pencil of the cover. Okay. Yes, this is my latest picture book in the Netherlands. Sometimes when I see a butterfly. And it's again together with an author and I promised myself not to create picture books together with others. But uh, the author is a real famous Dutch uh, singer. He's a, he's a man, his age is like uh, 78. But in the 70s and the 80s, he, he was really famous in the Netherlands. And now he had written children's songs. He sang these songs and they are, they are on Spotify. So people, uh, when they buy the book, there is a, a, a QR code to Spotify. And the text is uh, in it. And the text is uh, a song. So people can hear to the song, read the text and see the illustrations. So, yes, kind of, yeah. Um, the title in Spanish, in, in English, in Spanish. Yes, some, sometimes, sometimes when I see a butterfly. Ah, that's the title? Yeah, in English. In Dutch, soms als ik in Vlinder zie. Okay, so the four seasons in the Netherlands, yeah, four seasons, spring, summer, Autumn, windy, gray, rain, and winter, with a lot of little details for the children. Yeah. So a lot of drawings, yeah. Uh, maybe this one is nice. Maybe, oh, maybe I'll show it, uh, I will show it right now, yeah. About this drawing, illustration. Yes, okay. So over there, the pictures. The pictures and the rhino, and over here, the people are watching it, uh, in the zoo. And this is the, this is the drawing in uh, watercolor. 
and I put them together in Photoshop. So this is only the giraffe. So this is the, the drawing indeed, illustration. Yeah, this is over on the right. You see the on the, on the top. This is the picture. It's a, it's a, a typically Dutch old city center, and I thought, well, I'm going to draw to illustrate this one, like in the picture, and I put in what the song is about. So a real fat cat with a paper hat, and a, a child and a dog. They are they are looking to to the cat and over here. So it's kind of realistic, but in a strange way. Yeah, as I told you, so this is, a, this is a, a famous picture in the Netherlands. It's a famous art picture. And it's, uh, it's made in the 70s. Uh, so it, it was kind of a, a tribute and an, an ode to this picture. And as I told you, I thought, OK, I have to show the four seasons. There, were, there are children enjoying the time over here at this barn. And there, maybe it's nice to show a little bit of a monster dragon. Uh, because it's four seasons, you see the, the little dragon grow. Because uh, from spring to summer, there will be like three or no, there will be like three months. And then you see he grew. And the little girl is uh, singing on the guitar for him. And children are laying on the, on the roof. And I got some uh, critics from parents. Oh my God, Mark. <laughs> He puts children over there, and they're, this is like 12 meters high. What are you doing? I thought, oh, come on. <laughs> really? Is this really of your concern? This is a children's book. And in children's books, everything is possible, and it's out of our world. Remember, please, there are no, no borders for you. There are no rules for you. Create as if you are your own god, you know? Go for it. And from summer to, as I showed you, to autumn. Winter. It, it, uh, there was no snow for 10 years in the Netherlands. So uh, I've been talking to people over here if they're is possibly a climate change, I don't know. But in the Netherlands, there was snow in the past, but uh, for 10 years, no snow. And people who like uh, ice skating, you know, when the canals are frozen over, people go ice skating, it's not possible. Yeah, so this one is uh, a balloon. Contrast in colors, contrast in light, black and white, contrast in Soft and uh, soft and what's the other? Hard, hard, yeah. Contrast in many and very less. Again, every drawing, you can, in every illustration that I create, you can see these contrasts. And they help you too. Contrast spices up your drawing. Okay, so. One day, I was watching TV, uh, uh, National Geographic, something like that, and I saw a documentary about floating ice rocks. And I thought, whoa, floating ice rocks, really cool, because uh, above the water level, there can be a little, little tiny hill like this, but underneath the water level, there can be a, a really a big, a big rock that you don't see. And you know the MRI uh, scan in the, in the hospital? So this is like, like cut, in, cut in half. And I thought that could be really cool to put into a picture book. So the MRI, so we see in one image, we see what is happening above, but also below. Should I take an ice rock? Mm, okay, could be. 
maybe uh maybe maybe yeah maybe you know and then i came up with this story maybe i should take a turtle a water turtle because a water turtle can be above the water surface and and at the same time below okay maybe i put some people on top of the of the of his back and then i have a story you know how do they come on this how do how do they reach why do they reach why should they reach his back oh of course shipwrecked you know in the middle of the ocean they swim to this island and that's how la isla became the story so that's what i mean you know above the mri just like that picture yes la isla and this is my most most translated uh, picture book to 20, 20 languages. Yeah, really cool. I wrote a text for this. I wrote a story. Uh, and I went to my publisher in the Netherlands and he, uh, we were talking about, uh, he was reading the text, he was looking at the drawings. And then he said, Mark, ah, maybe we should leave out the text. And I was thinking, oh my God, for three months I've written this beautiful text. It's like a poem. I'm a writer. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I, so give me, give me a few days and I was thinking, but he, he was telling me, Mark, when we leave it out, maybe it's a, it's a risk because people can think uh, like, like grandmothers or grandfathers can think, oh my God, a book without words. Uh, what, 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 what to do? It's, it, this is not a book. But okay, so that was a little bit of a risk. But he told me, Mark, maybe you will go to a little bit to an art version of that spectrum of picture books. And of course I was, art, art? Yes, yes, please, art. I like art. And again, there are people who don't dare to buy the book because, you know, what's what to do with it. But, I, but when I talk to these people, I say, oh, please, within five minutes, Within five minutes, something happens. Just look, just look at the pictures. Let, let the child tell what is going on and you have started. It's beautiful. And that's how it works, yeah. So we left out the text. Uh, but there are countries like in Germany, like in France, who wanted a text. So they didn't dare to sell it. So they, uh, they used the text that I had written uh, in the beginning, they used the text. So there are countries that are not uh, convinced about leaving it out. But again, they have their own choice. For me, it's okay. So, uh, and I'm happy when the book sells <laughs> to another country. <laughs> okay, so this is the picture of a Chinese. Well, uh, the nice story is I went to Beijing together with a Belgian publisher to Beijing in 2000. Uh, 16, I think, uh, and this uh, China, to Beijing, and we met a Chinese uh, publisher, and he, he liked my work, but they wanted me to create a, a picture book for them, you know, uh, directly. So not selling it from the Netherlands, but directly. And uh, okay, so we had an agreement, and this is how uh, Island started uh, for a, for a Chinese uh, publisher. And I thought, okay, it's, it's for the Chinese people, so let's put in a Chinese uh, boat. <laughs> and as you, as you can see, the girl over here has a Chinese hat, you know, I don't know the English word, so it's the, yeah, you know? Yeah. So there are some Chinese elements in it. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the Chinese, the flat one, the big one, which they use on the, on the rice fields. I don't know the English. Uh, so yeah, so shipwrecked. And uh, this, is a, this is a sketch with my own uh, text. Yeah, over here you see how I work. All these little tryouts of this girl, of this dog, like 10 dogs, like 
10 times the father, like 10 times the girl, like over there, the wooden cabin. And I scan it and I choose one to put it into the illustration. The cover, the sketch of the final uh, page. Uh, and I didn't like this one, so this is too small. It's kind of a little bit scary to... I didn't like it too much, so we changed into this one. And it says, Gracias. <laughs> this is the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, yes, thank you. Are there more questions? Okay. I mean, how do you decide the amount of pages or draw that you want to spread? For a picture book? Yeah, it's you, it's your publisher. It's yeah, well, story. you know, and I think it's over here the same. A, a classic picture book has 12 spreads, you know, 24 pages. Uh, when a story, uh, a story has to be told into 12 spreads. If you need more, you have to ask yourself why. Why can't it be put into 12? And you know, 12 big spreads are so difficult to have, to, 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 to have the, 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 the quality at, at the highest uh, level. So don't put yourself into a lot of, lot of work uh, because it's, uh, a story has to be told in 12. You know? Uh, don't make it make it too hard on yourself, and uh, I think uh, I think a publisher is happy to uh, to use the twelve uh, spreads, right, Susanna? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the technical, that's the business-like uh, answer. Yeah, but it it, it also counts. It's a, it's a going together for the artist, but it has to be printed and it has to be. Yeah, the money also. So it's it's not only you as an artist, but again the publishing house, and it has to be done. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, what's first, the egg or the chicken? But uh, what's first, the drawings or the story that you want? To no, always first the concept. Always first the concept, the idea. Don't uh, start drawing when your concept isn't ready. Only when your idea is totally okay, then you start sketching, you start writing, but not before it's totally wow, because otherwise you can't, you can't begin drawing like, oh, we'll see where, where, wherever we end, because no, it's like a river that goes, it's gone. No, the concept, you, you have to do a lot of thinking in your head. Don't, don't write, don't do too much sketching, just think, think. A story like this could be like that. And when you're thinking, it, it, it's the, the most easiest way to, to come to a point, you know? It doesn't take a lot of time. It's, it's only here. Sit on a chair or watch the birds and think, think, think. Because when you are writing or sketching, it's a lot of energy in, 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 the, in the writing or in the sketching. So first, the concept has to be real good. Then you start in my case, writing, then I write a text, and uh, the text, most, most of the time the text is too, too big, you know? There are, there are sentences, sentences like, the forest is a beautiful green and there's a golden light, and, but again, these things have to be shown into the illustration, so skip the lines, you know? When I skip these lines, it becomes a picture book text, less and less and less. You know what I mean? There are a lot of visuals in the text that you have to skip because you have to show it. Yeah, what you, what you, what you see in the illustrations, don't write it. It's it double. Okay, yeah. When, when you're only the illustrator, do you interact with the writer? Uh, not, not, for the, not for the illustrated children's books. Uh, and again, I didn't. I, I don't do much uh, cooperation for the picture books, but 
when it was like that, of course you you should talk to them, but uh, you are not the you are not the you are not the, the the drawing hands of the author. You know, they have to know their place. You know, they're just the writer, not the artist. You have your own concept. You are the artist who knows best. You know, you know the best. So maybe there is a publisher who, of course, can tell you. I think the publisher has to be in between, in between the writer, because the writer has a lot of ideas, and I want it like this, and I want it like that. No, you are the one that gives a face to the characters, not the writer. They have to know that. You are the artist, and for, of course, for a picture book, you are, you are more important than the, than the writer, you know? More important. So uh, when, there, when there is a discussion between the, the, the author and the illustrator, the publisher has to be in between. They, the publisher has to think the author is right or not. They have to tell the, the author, no, come on, uh, a little bit less, please, you know? And uh, yeah, you're the artist, so that's uh, very important for a picture book. Okay. Say you work, you work uh, per year. Like how, how many books? Books. Per year? Uh, so uh, one picture book per year, and it takes like six, seven months. And what's left over is is uh, for uh, for these uh, illustrated uh, children's books. But they they go like in, into they merge into each other. You know. Yeah. And I can't do. Uh, many more. In the past, uh, I had, I've had some years, it's really crazy, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> there were f like 30 or 30 or 35 titles of children's books that I illustrated. That's how you reached the 500. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, yeah. So then I thought, okay, so the, uh, the amount has to be less and the quality has to go up. And how does the quality go up? When you spend more attention and more time and more. So it took some time, but it was, it was really uh, difficult for me to, you know, to change the, to change the, the, the clock, you know? The clock was only working hard, a lot of books, a lot of books. And then again, there was a gap because I wanted to create my own picture book, of uh, beginning something new. And it was, it was really scary because I didn't know uh, if it became a success. And as you know, the advance is not that high. It's, it's everywhere for a picture book, you know, the money. It's not that high. It's not, it's not paying you for seven months of full-time work, never. So there's a big risk in it. But when you feel it, you have to do it. You have to do it. Because when it becomes a success, of course, uh, there will be, uh, they will sell okay, and then, then it, will, it will start, you know? And now, of course, I get, I get the, 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 the money of the sellings of uh, Mexico, and I get the money of the sellings of, you know, every country. And then again, I can work on these picture books, because I know, but from that country, and over here in the Netherlands, and this picture book, and that picture book, and then it's, you have started something new, but you have to start it. And that's really scary, I know, really scary. Yeah. What was about your first book, your first picture book? Yeah. What was it about? What was it about? Uh, Nothing Happened is the title, and it's, it's translated into Spanish. So maybe you can uh, Google. Uh, but it's uh, by a Spanish publisher, Flamboyant. Flamboyant. Uh, it's about imagination. So uh, I made a lot of. Uh, I, made a, I thought maybe it's really cool to tell a story that's really boring. Like, what? What? So uh, a boy. What did you do on the day? Oh, nothing. Uh, I just went to swim. Everybody are thinking I went to swim in a swimming pool. But then the drawing is like he was swimming. Uh, with a whale, with a lot of beautiful fish in the ocean. And then, oh, I just, uh, I just say hi to a friend. And then you see him saying hi to two lions, and he's very small on top of it. So, so there is a big, con again, contrast uh, in what I'm writing and what you see. Yeah. Okay. 
questions? <laughs> yes. Where are you working right now? Oh yeah. So when I uh, when I uh, go back home after one week uh, from Mexico to uh, to the Netherlands, I have in my mind I will start a new picture book, and I've been waiting for a long time. I've been doing some. Uh, some big travels. I've been to, uh, as I told you, to Nepal. I've been to Colombia seven weeks ago. Now I'm here. It, it were, they were all uh, great invitations, but it made me also uh, restless because, you know, I have an idea, but I can't, I can't start on a picture book when I know uh, I have a travel and I have to do other things. I had to do, you know, the book cover of the unicorn. I had to do this one. I had to do that one. And so I was not uh, at ease to start a new picture book. And when I come home uh, next week, uh, there, are, there is nothing uh, from December to, I don't know, to, to the summer planned, and I will start a new picture book. Uh, and maybe it's a secret, but I, I, I like to tell it. It's, it's about uh, a friendly alien that will visit the Earth because he has problems, problems with his uh, UFO, and he crashes onto the Earth. Uh, into the jungle, and uh, over there he meets a little girl and her wolf pet. They become friends, and the girl the girl shows uh, shows him how beautiful Earth is, the planet is. So there will be a lot of beautiful enemies. Look, this is planet Earth, and then again comes the question: So the UFO is repaired? Repaired? Will he go back? Yes or no? That's the big question. <laughs> So I will start, uh, yeah, next uh, next week. But I'm still still thinking about uh, should I should I use something new in my work? I don't know some kind of new thing. I don't know what. I'm not. Uh, it has to be a process. Okay, but not 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 your problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you uh, and yeah. Me. Okay. A specific process to build the image, especially composition wise? Are there things that you know work and things that you know that don't, or is it just intuition? Or yeah, of course, intuition, but also I know there has to be a variety in it, you know? So, uh, so one composition can be brilliant, but again, the next page, page has to be completely different. So, uh, hi, you can, you can use some, some success things, you know, uh, what I mean to say is, you know what is good, use it, but again, you have to be, there has to be something else on the other page, yeah. because otherwise you show again and again, of course, like, uh, like in La Isla, there's, there's everywhere, there is this line, you know, it's, it starts over here, so this line, you know, it's over and over again. So the line is down, and I thought over here it has to be up, and over here it has to, okay up. But this is night, so this is the change. And then again, okay, exactly in the middle. So you know, yeah, uh, there is no formula. Your intuition, your feeling, and I think everything is okay when you feel it's okay. Nobody will say this, 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 this isn't okay when you are completely happy with it, you know? Yeah? Yes. Do you have uh, some book, do you have favorites? Favorites? Uh, uh, do you have children? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, people who have children over here don't have favorite children, you know? When you have three children, you can't say, this is my favorite child. You made them and they're all beautiful and maybe a little bit ugly, but you love them. <laughs> no, there are no favorites because they're all so different. They're, they all have a different struggle. They all have a different, uh, you know, over here, there are a lot of people uh, that, that I, touch in the heart and that is really amazing because I don't have the feeling that I that I'm a wizard you know I, I just got this idea I just wrote the text I just made these illustrations and when it comes together and people read it they, they get emotional or oh my god it's not me 
something some something is happening happening over there and it, it's it's not me you know it's it's magic and again this one could be my favorite because it goes everywhere and everywhere it's it's uh, it's a success and uh, and a lot of children are laughing about this one you know that's also really cool yeah ha 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 you know and they're all all mine yeah so and this one is also uh, a success in the netherlands because it tells about uh, children who have uh, children who are dreamers but again you have children who are doers and children who are thinkers and the dreamers are a little bit of children when they are three four five six years old they have a slow start they are dreaming they are very sensitive they don't know what they will be when they grow up i don't know I, so i'm telling about myself i i didn't know i yeah i like to draw that's it. But there are other children that go more fast, you know? The, the doers and the thinkers, I'm going to be, a, I don't know, an engineer or... They all know. And dreamers have a very slow start, but I tell these kind of people bring happiness to the world when they grow up. Uh, the artists, the writers, the illustrators, the movie made, the dancers, the theater players. So a lot of people, yeah, Mark, oh, it's me. It's me that I'm uh, uh, reading about. No, so not... Uh... Okay. Um, after having so, much, so many books and some of them very success, successful, do you find it difficult to do the next book because there's an expectation yeah. to repeat yourself? I know, yes. yeah. Yes and no. Yes and no. I've had... Uh, so, so, remember, for, for, maybe for you it looks all like success, but there are, of course, people in the Netherlands or, or uh, people who are reading the book uh, in, in, in newspapers and writing articles about it. They, they, I've, I've, had, I've had critics, you know? So this one is less good than that one. And, but I, for 25 years I've been creating and I have, have heard good stories and bad things and now I think, oh my God. It doesn't matter to me, because uh, there are books really, or not really bad, but a little bit bad in critics, and they sell really well. And so, what what's, what counts? What what is more important? Uh, like, like this one, I think this is, this one is brilliant, and and children are laughing out loud, really. But the book uh, has only like uh, two or three translations, only two or three. Why? I don't know. But it's it's cool, and I'm totally happy with it. But okay, that's that's also good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, leave it out. It's uh, I don't know. When my intuition is good about something, so what I will start soon the 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 alien book uh, feels good, and that that is what counts. I have to be. I know for sure it will be fun for me. Remember. It has to be fun for you, not for the publishing house, not for the reader. It has to be fun for you working on it. When it's without fun, stop. Please stop. It doesn't reach the reader. There is no connection. Stop. You have to be, oh my God, yeah, whoa, yes. Oh, and don't, you can't sleep because the other day you, you will again and again, yes. When you have this feeling, oh my God, it will be a success, really, really. That's the that's the the key you have to uh, you have to feel. That's the only thing that counts. Yeah. Okay. How would you approach a difficult issue? You were saying about it has to be fun for me. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking about a. How could I explain a invisible illness to a child, for example, which you have to talk about pain, you have to talk about mm -hmm. of, uh, mm -hmm. not feeling well. Yeah. How could you approach that? Yeah, always there has to be, there has to be uh, some lightness in it, you know? It, has to, it must not be too, uh, too dark, too depressive, because 
uh, people people won't buy the book because it's so so sad and so you know it's not for yeah it's not for fun. So there has to be of course you have to be you have to be honest like in in uh, always nearby be honest but there has to be something that is that doesn't go that deep as you feel it you know the message has to be clear at the end but it you you, you can't you can't uh, uh, you can't uh, oh my god um, no I lost it no you, you can't put in your own a deep down feeling your depression d depressed feelings about that illness which is pain and which is don't put it all in the book because it's too heavy it's you know yeah you have to balance, yeah, have to balance. so uh, or 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 maybe you can um, maybe you don't use uh, humans don't use children maybe uh, maybe choose an, 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 an animal as a character could be a little bit lighter you know could be yeah yeah it's difficult yeah you we could have a discussion about it but it's uh, it's more than these uh, three words that i say you know yeah okay thank you yes okay yeah everything okay yes okay well uh, thank you i don't know uh, what about the time um what can we do next? Uh, we can finish it totally. The exercise, yeah. Did you all want to? Yeah, but I'm I'm still thinking what what we can do. So what was in the in the description? It was uh, like black and white. Um, is it an idea? Uh, we create an animal. You draw an animal. The animal, uh, maybe for the people who haven't read the story of uh, of Always Nearby, there is a there are a few animals who, who kind of whisper the love of grandmother to Babu. So maybe it would be nice to draw an animal that could be useful for you to bring that uh, message. Could be a butterfly, but it also can be a, an elephant or <laughs> something funny. Let's let's uh, make something. Uh, not that serious. So uh, uh, maybe you draw an animal in, in, in black and white. So maybe with a pencil or with a black uh, marker. And I will I will uh, see what you are doing. And maybe we have kind of a chat or that's it. You know, there, there isn't one exercise that can learn you a lot in five or ten or fifteen minutes. You know, that's uh, difficult. Yeah, maybe add something to it. Uh, uh, like uh, there has to be. A light source in a in a in a in a corner, you know. So you have to put in some uh, some uh, some uh, 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 shadow, 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 uh, and then we talk about it. Okay, let's do that for how many minutes? I'm all the way from Jalapa, like uh, 600 kilometers away, just to be yeah. here with you. Today. No, <laughs> yeah. not for this. Yeah, for this. Oh. yeah only no. for this. Yeah. And she, she wants to be a professional like you. She's yeah. aiming for her first uh, illustrated book. So you're an inspiration oh, to her. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you. thank you. Wow. That's a compliment to me. Hopefully she will make some better for the soon. Yeah? Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where about you?